Wouldn't they all amazing? Give them a round of applause if you would for every comic you saw so far tonight. Now, as you've been hearing over and over again, this is the last Judy Carter comedy workshop, and that is true. For 25 years she's been doing this, and she changed her mind. This is the last part of um, This is, to give you an idea of how much Judy is, is able to do, this is something she's done on the side. You know, running Judy Carter Comedy Workshops is now something she does on top of all sorts of other things she does, and she gets so much done. You get, if you get together for her for lunch, she's also written a resume, sent out a, a new movie, and uh, yeah, she's, she, uh, yeah, no, that's great. What else are you doing? Oh, I'm just writing a new book. You know. She can multitask, get more done in a day than most people do in a year, and I'm always impressed with that. She's become uh, kind of like a sister to me, a, a, a mentor to me. Um, when I came in, I'd done stand-up for years, but I'd never uh, really taught uh, comedy like she has taught it, and I, I just watched her in amazement. You know, eight years ago, sitting in a room watching her transform people in sometimes in ten minutes from rambling into just perfect spot on comedy, and I thought, oh my god, that's amazing. And you know, I've done this for seven years for her, um, and we've just grown together. I love working with her; she's such an inspiration to me um, because we both share something that comedy is not just about getting laughs, but it's about being honest and getting to something important. <laughs> And I think that's what really impresses me about what we're able to do with all these students tonight. They didn't just get to be funny, but they got to be importantly truthful about something that was real to them. So that's something that Judy stands for, and I just, I, I just really believe in that. And um, you know, the fact that she's both so, she's so absolutely centered in what she wants to do and tremendously insecure at the same time. <laughs> it's just, I wondered if, if, if the Messiah was like that. I mean, if Jesus was like that, it would have been just like, uh, uh, the Serpent on the Mountain, amazing, that was amazing, just really, did I look fat? Because I thought I looked fat. <laughs> I, I should never done it on the mountain, because the mountain just like makes your ass look huge. I should have worn this, I should have worn it black, because white is not my color. We'll fix it in the paintings, it'll be fine. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to take up any more time, because she's ready to see you right now. Please, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Judy Carter. when he came to my class. <laughs> Funny. I said, no, Rob, this way. <laughs> and um, I don't teach that. Oh. <laughs> I know, I started my breasts were up here. <laughs> and now I look at my dogs and go, isn't it weird? They got nipples on their stomach. Yeah, that, that's weird. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> older, although I did, I did fall in love, which is so cool. I fell in love, and I wasn't even my falling in love weight, so that's the... <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that weird? <laughs> yeah, I have a basic belief you should not try and get into someone else's pants until you can get into your own. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's just, it's just so hard getting older. I, you know, I know the iPad 2 is thinner, but I'm not. But, you know, <laughs> I'm jealous of an iPad. I don't know, you're coming here after you hit 40, your metabolism goes, eh, it makes a complete stop. It's like I have to jog like two miles to work off a Tic Tac I had in 1999. <laughs> my body's like Vegas. What goes in my body stays in my body. <laughs> <laughs> sucks. And you gotta have a mammogram. That sucks, you know. Oh my god, they say it's a painless thing, Miss Carr. Just put your breast squash! What's my nipple doing across the friggin' room? It's not getting your breast caught in a car window. Roll it down! You got my breast! We women will do anything. Squeeze it. What do you want? That? Fine. You, you guys wouldn't do that. Yeah, like see a guy 
have a scrotogram, you would do that. <laughs> no, this won't hurt at all, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Just put your right here, squaw. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yes, these lovely coasters were once my husband. <laughs> Start watching these commercials. They have the stupidest products for us women. Have you seen this? Replens for the menopausal woman. Keeps you lubricated for four days. Who the fuck wants to be lubricated for four days? What are you going to be at a bar going like, hi? Woo. <laughs> stupid. What am I, in a freaking rodeo? Howdy, partner! <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I didn't, I, you know, if you told me that it would be like right now, I'd be quitting doing this and <laughs> telling you that I married a wife. I, I didn't even know I was gay. I really didn't. I, she's a gay one. But, um... <laughs> My grandmother, my grand, my Jewish grandmother, she kind of knew I was gay, and I didn't. She, she, in the middle of dinner, she said, "So what, Judy? Are you a homosexual?" <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know what that was. I thought that was something you got at a furniture store. <laughs> like two end tables and a lovely homosexual. <laughs> homosexual in my bedroom. <laughs> and they are lovely to sit on. But, um, <laughs> but now, I'm married. We're really, we're, we are legally married, and then they say, no, we can't get married. I, I, you know, I don't know what's going on. In California, we used to be such a hip, cool state. Iowa has gay marriage. I didn't know there were gay people in Iowa. I thought you needed an ocean near you to be gay. <laughs> you know, apparently there's some gay farmers going, these crops are fabulous. <laughs> but no, it's hard. It's, it's hard, weird, scary, stupid, act out. Um, <laughs> A television producer. Her boss is here. Her friends are here. She's not, bitch. Um, <laughs> no, her mother's in surgery. But it's hard being married to a producer. Oh my God, I have to sleep with her just to get into the home movies. <laughs> we were in Africa. I'm not at 2 a.m. She's looking at dailies, <laughs> going, I think we need to recast you with someone like you, but younger. <laughs> After we make love, she says, don't worry, we'll fix it in post. <laughs> I don't know, you know, I, it's really weird. Um, we've had two showcases today, two showcases last, last time, and, 
and I and it's very hard to to say goodbye to something that obviously is successful, but I really believe that you have to leave room in your life for new things to come in, and I'm I'm excited about that. I truly am. I'm coaching speakers, working with speakers. I'm bringing humor to corporate America because corporate America has really become humor impaired. I'm not kidding. All the, really, people in corporate America, they need humor. I'm, I, I do sometimes my show for them. It's so true. Thank you, five people who actually have a job. Um, <laughs> we're unemployed, we'll give a shit. We're in corporate America. <laughs> oh, you know, you do a joke there, and they're, they're frightened to even laugh. It's like, ooh, is that appropriate? Is HR laughing? <laughs> HR laughs, maybe a laugh there. It's just like, oh, we got to take the pole out of the ass of corporate America. And, and you know, I just want to give a couple thank yous before I go. And I really want to thank my long relationship with the uh, improv. Thank you, guys. Thank all the waiters here, the managers who work there. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for supporting. I, I actually performed on the stage when I was eight. It was the Ash Grove. <laughs> I, know, I, grew, I went to Fairfax High School, and uh, I know I grew up in this poor Jewish neighborhood. It was dangerous. It was like kids in the hood then. You know? <laughs> no, seriously, it's a drive-by math test. And, um, <laughs> I really want to thank my staff at Comedy Workshops. Uh, I want to thank um, Matthew David, who runs my office. I want to thank Jamie Flom, who's doing photography. Shannon Gettins, who's helped out so much. And I, and I just, Carrie, I love you. Thank you so much for all the work that he's done. And your kindness and your patience with everybody. Um, I don't have anything funny to say, but I'm sure you could punch this up later. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to thank uh, my wife. She's not here, but I think she'll watch the video. And <laughs> thank you. And I, uh, I don't want to forget anybody to thank. One second. One second. Thank the improv. Thank this. Thank that. Oh, OK. And I also want to thank, more importantly, all my students. I know many of you are here. I know people have flown in tonight. Oh, I'm going to cry. This is really from my heart. Um, you know, they say you have to teach what you need to learn. And I have taught you guys to be who you are. I've taught you to be your authentic self. I've taught you to be vulnerable and to stand up here and turn your problems into punchlines and share your life with people, doing one of the scariest things in the world. And now you've taught me how to do that. And I, from the bottom of my heart, I so love you. Thank you.